Shalom, and welcome to Via Hafta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. Commitment. God requires an absolute commitment from His people. That means everything in our life must be subjected to Him. And if we're not totally committed to Him, we will not be living a pleasing life. Our life will not be one that is a life of glory to God, but rather we will be more and more turning away from His will and embracing our will. So let me ask you a commitment. Are you totally committed to the living God? Our Messiah, Yeshua, that is Jesus Christ, He is so frequently called Lord. Why? Because He must be the Lord of our life. If we're going to be an individual that serves Him in a way that He finds pleasing and accomplishing His will, that's what a disciple is called. And we're going to see today in this study how serious it is to live in a way that shows that He is the first one in our life. So with that said, take out your Bible and look with me to the book of Matthew and chapter 10. Now, initially, we're going to focus in for a few minutes on verse 34, Matthew 10. Verse 34, and I can remember that almost exactly from this day, 35 years ago, I taught this passage of Scripture. And this first verse, how I addressed it, what I said about it, literally got me fired from a congregation. Now, I was doing an internship there, but... It was because of my stance, something that I feel is very basic. It should be something that every believer understands, embraces, and agrees with. But this particular congregation, they became very hostile towards me because of what I said about this verse. So look with me. Matthew 10, verse 34. Messiah is speaking, and he says, do not think that I have come to cast. Now, most Bibles will say to bring, that's okay, but it's the word cast. And it speaks of his authority that he can simply cast, throw, put, as he desires whatever he wants into this world. This word in the original language speaks of his sovereignty, that he is in control. Once more, verse 34. Do not think that I have come to cast peace upon the earth. I have not come to cast peace, but notice what he says, but a sword. Now, a sword is a weapon of warfare. What literally is Messiah saying here? Well, when we look at this same teaching in the book of Luke, there's a change. Instead of the word sword, Luke substitutes and puts the word division. And this helps us understand the intent of Yeshua. What did our Lord mean? This is what he means. He brings a sword that brings about division. And what is he referring to? It's very clear. The emphasis that he's been speaking about in the last several weeks of our study is the gospel. And it's the gospel that acts as a sword. It divides people. It brings division. Either you accept it and you're brought into the congregation of the Lord or you reject it and you are excluded from the family of God, from the kingdom of God, from the blessings of God. 
So it's the gospel that is like a sword that divides people in two, two groups. So let me ask you, what group are you in? And the second thing we need to realize is what he said. Do not think that I came to bring peace into the world. Now, peace for many, this is the supreme objective. As a believer, you know what our supreme objective should be? To obey him, to live in a way that's pleasing to him, that glorifies him in a way that faithfully manifests the truth of God in our life, doing his will, following after his instruction so that he is well pleased. And we know something, that when Messiah comes again in order to set up his kingdom, he's not coming to bring peace. He's coming for judgment. All of those who have rejected his new covenant, that new covenant is tied to that gospel message. And if you've rejected it, you are not going to experience eternal peace, but the eternal judgment of God. And this is what I said that really upset people. And it was this. There's many individuals that think that it's good, that it's of God, that we uh, worship together, meaning this, this religion and some other religion and still another religion, that we might have theological differences. They may call God by a different name and their God does not reflect the biblical character of what we read in the scripture. No, their God may be pleased by a whole other set of commandments. He may have a different character, a different purpose. You know what that tells me? It's not the same God. Realize something. Let's make it very specific. Islam. What they call Allah is not the God of Israel. When you study the attributes, the character, the commandments, the ways of Allah, and when you see what the scripture says concerning the God of Israel, they are not the same God. That means that a follower of Yeshua, a believer, a Messianic Jew, a Christian, cannot worship side by side with a Muslim because we have, hear this, Nothing in common. And therefore, what really upset people is this. The only way that we can be a peacemaker is when we proclaim Messiah Yeshua, him crucified, dead, buried, and risen from the dead as the only Savior. It is that message and that message alone that brings about peace. Now, does that mean that we should be unkind to people of different religions? Absolutely not. We should pray for them. We should love them. We should be kind to them. We can bless them with, with good things, meaning if they're in need, help them out. If they have a problem, solve that problem. If they have a financial need, you can show your love of Messiah and share I want to help you with this financial problem because my God, Messiah Yeshua, Jesus Christ, has told me to love those, all people, even my enemies. But realize they are not worshiping the same God. Realize that the only peacemakers are those who carefully, correctly, accurately share the message of the gospel, the truth, of Messiah's revelation. And that's why he says here, read it carefully. Do not think that I have come to cast peace upon the earth. I have not come to cast peace, but a sword. Verse 35. For I have come to bring division, a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a bride, now this can also be the word daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Why is that? It's what we've already learned. And that is the gospel message that says Yeshua is the only way.
to find forgiveness of sin. He's the only Savior. Without that gospel message, you can't enter into the kingdom of God. Without receiving that gospel message, you will be eternally condemned in hell. Now, that's not popular today. People will say that's very narrow-minded, but it is the truth of God. And are we going to compromise that? Not if we have a proper commitment to the living God, the God of Israel. It doesn't matter what the world says. It doesn't matter what individuals think. It doesn't matter anything other than what the Word of God teaches. The Scripture says He is the way meaning the way into the kingdom of God. He is the truth. All other prophets were liars other than the ones who prophesied under the Holy Spirit, who we read about in the scripture. But it's Messiah, his message, and the message of those who received the Holy Spirit to write down the truth of God in this book, the Bible. It is those individuals and only them that revealed the truth of God. All other religions are false. That is the commitment that we must demonstrate if we are going to be pleasing in God's eyes. So he says, you need to realize that I have come in order to bring division. A man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Verse 36. And... The enemies of a man will be the members of his house. Here again, the gospel message divides. There's no middle ground. You either receive it or reject it. You're either a follower of Yeshua or against him. And those who reject it, they have nothing in common. Can we still love them? Yes. Do we pray for them? Yes. Are we kind to them? Yes. But realize ultimately, when they die, there is no hope for them. And when we speak the truth, those who do not belong to Messiah, they're not going to like the truth of God. And there's going to be conflict. Understand that. Do not be turned away from the truth because it causes conflict. This is what Messiah is teaching us. He himself says, don't think that I came to, to bring peace, to cast peace upon this earth. No, his truth is like a sword that divides. Look now to, to verse 30, 37, where he says, the one who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me imagining this is what i spoke of at the beginning that our commitment to him has to be a total commitment and everything else is subjected to that commitment it's pretty clear here does it not he says if you do not love me more than father or or mother he says you are not worthy of me. Verse, verse 37, second part. And the one who loves son or daughter more than me, this one, is not worthy of me. And, and notice what he says here. He ties this commitment to something else. And that is how this commitment to him is going to manifest itself. Notice the next thing he speaks of. Look, if you would, to verse 38. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Now, notice he speaks of the cross. What does that mean? The cross is an emblem of persecution. It is a symbol of suffering and ultimately those who were crucified obviously died. And what he says here is my message is like a sword. It will cause those to be in conflict with me, persecute me, bring about situations where I suffer within them, and ultimately I might be called, you might be called to lay down our life for that gospel message. 
And why he picks the cross here is because the cross is foundational to the gospel. And the gospel speaks about a few very important truths that we need to remember. First of all, why did Yeshua go to that cross? Because of my sin. Make it very personal. It is personal because it was my sin that caused them to go to the cross. Your sin as well. And realize something else. That that cross speaks about God's judgment. His judgment of sin. It was only through the cross that my sins were completely, sufficiently, and fully dealt with. They were judged so by now through faith and what he did in my behalf. I have redemption. And that redemption is eternal. The cross is foundation. It speaks about my sin. It speaks about God's faithfulness to judge sin. And we're so grateful that Messiah took that judgment that should have been upon me. Again, make it personal. That judgment that should be upon me, it fell upon him. And his righteousness, it even gets better. Not only did my judgment fall upon Yeshua, but the righteousness of Messiah Yeshua, the righteousness of Jesus of Nazareth, was transferred to me. And therefore, that gives me what? It gives me assurance. Because in the same way that my sins were transferred upon him, when was that done? Remember what Messiah said upon that cross. When he says, Father, why have you forsaken me? That's speaking about that separation between God the Father and God the Son. Never had it been before. When Messiah Yeshua experienced that, he cried out. And when was that? Well, the scripture says that he, speaking of Yeshua, who never sinned, who did not know sin at all, when he became sin in our behalf, that is, when our sins were placed upon him, that's when that separation occurred between God the Father and God the Son. And that's why he cried out, as it says in Psalm 22, a very prophetic psalm. My father, why have you forsaken me? That moment of separation because sin brings about a separation between man and God. And that sin was judged perfectly through Messiah's death. But he didn't remain dead. He rose on that third day, signifying the victory that he achieved for me and for you. That's why he speaks here about the cross. Look again, verse 38. And whomever will not take up his cross and follow after me, this one is not worthy of me. Verse 39. The one who finds his life shall lose it. But the one who loses his life on account of me, he shall find it. What this is speaking about is something very clear, and that is that call to an absolute surrender. You know what I like about the Word of God? Is that I like that it is so precise. There is nothing left to uncertainty. God requires an absolute commitment. You are either for him or against him. So ask yourself right now that question. Are you for Yeshua? Are you a follower of Messiah Jesus? That's the question. If you are, he requires that commitment whereby you are willing to understand that your faith in him, your commitment to him may cause you to be at odds, to be rejected by family members, by parents, by children, by brothers, by in-laws. That's the truth of the gospel. It is a sword that divides. But he says here, three times, if we don't have that commitment, what did he say? Then we are not worthy of him. 
And remember how he talked about last week? That we're ashamed of him, he'll be ashamed of us if we don't confess him before men. And how do we do that? Just not by saying, I believe in him. But we also, that belief, if it's genuine, if it's real, it is going to manifest itself in obedience to his word. Now, again, I always get emails. I want to make this clear. One is not saved by obedience. We are saved by grace. It's a free gift. And we access that grace by faith. Only faith in him, accepting what he did on that cross, believing in the resurrection, understanding that it was his death that paid my debt of sin, all sin in my life. And that fact causes me to become a new creation. Now, notice where the scripture goes when we read on in verse 40. It says, Speaking about, and remember the context, this is all within Yeshua sending forth his disciples, telling them to serve him, to go to battle against demons, disease, all sorts of things that are against God's will, all sorts of things that are related to the outcome of sin. And we're supposed to proclaim going city by city, and this is why he says, look at verse 40. The one who receives you receives me. We spend time sharing, loving, demonstrating truth. And we give people that gospel message. And if they receive that message that we share, it says here, they are receiving me, meaning Yeshua. And the one who receives me, notice this. The one who receives me receives the one who sent me. Who's that? God the Father. Now this teaches us a very important principle, and that's this. The only way, did you hear that? The only way that one can receive God, that living God, the only one true God, as a Jewish individual, we believe in one God. I also believe in the Trinity, and there's no conflict in that. But in order to have a right relationship with God, you have to receive the one that he sent. That's Yeshua. So if you reject Yeshua, you reject the God of Israel. Did you hear that? If you reject Jesus, you reject the God of Israel. That's what he's saying here. If you receive Yeshua, you received the one who sent him. And it was God the Father that sent God the Son into this world. Read on, verse 41. And the one who receives a prophet in the name of the prophet, a prophet's reward he receives. What it's saying is this. When one comes in the name of the prophet, that one receives this one because of revelation now i believe it is sharing the prophetic truth in the scripture when someone says here's prophecy what isaiah said jeremiah ezekiel daniel what yeshua taught when we receive the word of the prophets what they taught through that individual that is sharing that then we also are going to receive the wage of the prophet. It says in the second part of verse 41, and the one who receives a righteous one in the name of that righteous one receives the righteous one's wage or reward. So when we, and notice here, there's not an accident how the scripture's unfolding. He begins by prophecy, and righteousness and what's the message here it's so simple it is through prophetic truth that prophetic truth produces righteousness that's why i emphasize prophecy if we don't understand prophetic revelation we're not going to understand god's definition of righteousness so you receive a prophet you receive a prophet's reward. You receive a righteous man, you affirm that is righteous. And you receive that righteous man's reward. And then he says, 
verse 42. And whoever should, should give water, give drink to one of these little ones. Now, here I believe that it's speaking about one that society overlooks. Could be a child, perhaps. Someone who is, is considered unimportant by, by others. When you give a drink, and notice what it says. If you should give a drink to one of these little ones, a drink of cold water, a cup of cold water, only in the name of a disciple. Meaning you do it, why? Simply because you're a disciple of Yeshua. That you understand that's how a disciple lives. We give to the needs of others. That's our call. Yeshua, he has met our needs for eternity. Doesn't matter what happens in this age. We are going to have everything in abundance. In Judaism, when we speak about the kingdom, Malchut Hashem, the kingdom of God, one of the words that we use, an adjective to describe it, is shefa. It is a kingdom of abundance. There's going to be no lacking in the kingdom of God. And therefore, it says here, when we give a drink of cold water to one of these little ones, he says, on account of simply being a disciple. Notice how this chapter ends. He says, truly I say to you, and it's no, no. So we would translate it in English, never, ever is the implication. Never, ever will you lose his reward. That one who does that is not going to be a loser, but rather he is going to have a great reward. So be someone who just doesn't mouth a commitment. But what we see here is that the gospel brings two groups. One who is for, one who is against. And those who are for demonstrates it by taking up their cross. They understand it's a call to suffer, to be persecuted, even to lose one's life. And what are we about? Being a blessing to others. Our commitment is to bless others. And when we do that, we don't suffer loss, but we will never, ever lose those great promises, those blessings that God has for us. Where? In the kingdom of God. Well, I'm out of time. Until next week, Shalom from Israel. Well, we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others. Please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org. Again, to find out more about us, please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel.